yeah, I'm a, a, both a coder and a podcast host, but the podcast is in, in Finnish. It's called Kodia Pinnanalla. Uh, but as a coder uh, at the moment, um, I work in a comp- gaming startup company called Rollverse. Uh, unfortunately, we are in early stages, so I can't really tell you what we are doing, but it's related to gaming. And then we are utilizing the latest generative AI technology to make the gaming experience even more awesome. But hopefully we can release something out soon. Uh, as a coder, uh, I started using Clojure about 10 years ago. Um, and I, since then I've been using it both in open source projects and then in almost all of the all of the real work gigs. Some some places I worked, they have been full closure houses, and sometimes the closure has been in a smaller part, but but nevertheless. Uh, today I'm going to talk about load testing and load testing, how, how you can do load testing in, in closure. For me, the load testing has been almost always uh, a thing that I, I have been interested in. So I, for reason or another, I think almost all of my career have, has been that if, if we need it, if there's need for load testing, I'm, I have been usually the person who has been responsible for doing that. So that has never been my title, but for some reason, I've, I've been very really interested in, in testing that our application actually can scale and it, it handles the load and that kind of stuff. Mm. Back in the days, I think it was something like 10 years ago, I was uh, writing the load tests in, in Gatling, which is Scala uh, based uh, tool. And it was okay, but there were a few things that I didn't uh, like Scala. One thing is that it's, it's, um, it's really heavily using the DSL and, and which makes like normal programming more hard if, if I want to just compose functions and what kind of, I have to really learn the, the DSL. And then at least back then it was, it was really because of the DSL, it was really married with the HTTP technology. So the only thing you could test was, was if your backend was HTTP based. And then at least I had some cases where we had some queues and in load test, I wanted to send stuff in the queue. And now, for example, in a gaming, it's it's very common that 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 the backend is is implemented with some kind of a custom binary protocol. So you need more custom ways to to connect the server in load tests. And then then the last thing was that uh, I I back then I was like just starting to use Clojure, and I really enjoyed the REPL driven development. So I was thinking that hey it would be nice to also have the Ripple uh, experience when writing load tests. And therefore, of course, I had to start writing my own tool in Clojure. It started as a wrapper for Gatling and it, it, it was called CLJ Gatling for years. And actually just like a week ago, uh, I just renamed the tool to Trombi and the reason for renaming was that uh, it's it has evolved a lot and it's not a wrapper for for Gatling really at, but it has it's its own tool and and, and that kind of stuff uh, today I'm not just going this is not the market marketing speech about my tool the idea is that that I will use this uh, my this trumpet tool for showing the examples but I think that these examples, good work that if you want to roll, roll your own custom solution for doing uh, closure load testing. So what is load testing? Uh, uh, we don't want to go to full theory in here, but it's good to say something about how, how I see the things. Um, first of all, uh, there are like three things you have a, some kind of a tool that you use for, for load testing. Then you have your system 
system under test uh, that you want to test. And then what, what you want to test is actually that you want to simulate the users, that what, what the users are doing in the, in the system. What I mean that by that is, for example, if you, if you have some kind of shopping cart application, you want to simulate how users would use the system in real, like they will log in, then pick up some products like some shoes and then go to a shopping cart. That's a scenario that user wants to, wants to do. And instead of just throwing single requests, you want to simulate that there are a lot of, lots of these users doing their user flow and lots of these users doing this in, in parallel so that it's, it should be as realistic as possible. And based on that, you will, uh, it, it's, it's good that if, if, if the tool that you are using to, to simulate this load, you get also some benchmarks and results so that like when you're calling some uh, methods in, in a backend, you, you get some response times and then you can calculate some measurements based on that. Also today, I think most applications will have some performance metrics anyway. So you should also utilize uh, that some kind of application performance mo monitoring while, while running load tests, because these metrics are coming inside the system. So you can get a lot more uh, out of these actually than, than for the load testing tool. Okay, enough theory. So let's start seeing how this would work in, in, in closure. So I prepared some example here. So in Trompi and, and in general, if you do this from some like from scratch, you need some way to connect connect to backend. And I'm for for example, I will use HTTP. I've I've chosen here to use Hato, which is a uh, closure wrapper for I think it came from in Java 11, but in Java's own own modern HTTP client. So there are some uh, basic uh, configurations here, and then I've created this kind of a helper method that I could use in 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 actual load testing simulation, which is just creating a request to certain URL and then, then there's some, some setup. So now I can call this and call the Google URL and then I'll get, get the status code was 200. Now, now in, in load testing, this uh, approach is not actually very good because the idea is that, that you want to send like thousands of requests from one computer so that you actually generate a lot of load. So you don't want to use this kind of uh, blocking requests. Uh, if you want to run these in parallel, you actually need thousands of threads. So instead, it's good idea to have like a, a way for doing asynchronous requests and use non-blocking IO. That, that way you can generate more load. And now this is, a bit more complex, but the idea here is that we are using Hato's um, async, asynchronous uh, version, where you say that the async is true, and you can uh, have a callback uh, met function that actually then 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 does the response handling. So it, it's not blocking, but it's waiting. Uh, it's it's then responding. And in the callback handler, I'm checking the response. Uh, and I'm actually now using a callback that was passed in to this function. This, you will see later why, why this is useful. And then as a response, the response will be sent to core async channel. The reason for this is that, that I'm using now this with Trompi and Trompi supports non-blocking functions by this way, so that if you re uh, return a go, go channel, it will use that instead of waiting for the result of the synchronous call. And 
And, and in here we have also this kind of uh, generator helper I will use later uh, for for generating payload. You will know later why that's that's also useful. So this is a very generic method that that we can uh, call different URLs and dif with different methods. And now I can how this works now how how you can use this is that you get give a URL then method and as a callback there is no function and in this function we can check that the status is what we want and then we return uh, return true if if it's uh, 200 and because this is now a core async channel this way we can read the value and now it says true so the uh, our call was successful and with help of that we can create our first simulation this is not very clever simulation but and now, now this is a way how, how you would uh, in Trompi define a simulation just like some name and then these are the scenarios that we we'll, we will use in 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 the simulation uh, in this simple case, we have just one uh, scenario, which is calling Google, and then it has only one step, which is call front page. But this is as simple as, as it can get. And this step has one request function, which is now using this, our method that we created and tested in the REPL that you can call this method. And in here, uh, uh, all of these functions get this kind of a context that we can use later. But this is a, a specification of, of our simulation. And now we can uh, run this uh, with Trombi. So we pass in the, this simulation and then say that, okay, let's use five concurrent uh, uh, users and send in total 20 requests and and now it's uh, we get some results back so so it's saying that like there were 20 requests and and zero ko which means uh, uh, no failures and then then some basic response time uh, uh, measurements like what was the minimum and maximum and and mean time and that kind of stuff then what is there's something weird with the mic. I hope you hear still me. Okay, yeah. Anyway, uh, then um, you can also, it's very common in, in tests that you want to um, actually run, run the tests with a certain period of time. Uh, at least that's how I usually do load tests, like load, run them for 15 minutes, or if it's some stress test, e even longer. Uh, so instead of saying how many requests we want to make, we can say the duration and just let's now run with, with one second because we don't want to wait for that long. Uh, okay, and then, then I said that it's, it is often pretty nice to get also some kind of uh, reports so this this uh, default it just just um, gives you some basic basic data and it's good that it comes as a closure data so you can actually use that for something but if you want to generate like something more uh, fancy then then Trump can utilize the same mechanism that uh, well, maybe I said the conquerors a bit I don't want to call Google Google too much. They don't like me after this if I start bombarding them. So now uh, we say that we want to use this kind of a special reporter, which is Kotlin high charts. And now it actually, I don't know if you can see it, it, it actually returns a path where it has created a report and we can go uh, to see and open 
Oh, it's, it's here. It's, uh, what's the latest? This one. Yeah, there's like now a folder where we have this kind of, I don't know if you have used Gatling ever, you, you get the same same kind of a request which are a report that has more details about what happened during the simulation. So this way you can start calling calling uh, some uh, page basically. But of course this is this is not the my my idea is that if you want to really simulate the application, they are usually more complex than this, and they are stateful, so that you have to do a certain things in a certain order. So that's uh, what we look now. So let's, oh, maybe I show you the application we are going to test. So um, the application we are going to test, this is an, yet another open source project that I've created. This is a this is this is in Finnish. So you, you don't have to understand this really. This is a card game that is that at least used to be pretty uh, popular in 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 Finland. At least my parents played this, and and I played as a kid. And for a reason or another, I wanted to create an online version of this game, just as a hobby. Uh, this is a two versus two game. So the interesting the thing that we want to test here is that like. When we want to join the game, uh, I'll enter my name and they then say, press the button. It's actually now saying that it's searching for the game and it needs four players before we can play. So let's add Tina uh, and then let's add Jake. And still it's waiting for players. And then like, Joe enters the game. So now it says, okay, actually now I found the, found the, uh, uh, your teammates. And then it's like, uh, sets the teams that Marcus and Tina are in one team and uh, Jake and Joe are in a second team. And now you can play the card game, but that's, that's not, if someone wants to play, I can, I can show the game after the presentation. But the, the, the thing is that, okay, now, what we want to test is how clients are connecting to this game. And, and that, that's actually called matchmaking. And usually, especially in the games, that's that's the place where most of the load easily comes. When, like, for example, you open the new version of the game, everybody wants to join the game together. And then you want to test that how, how well this matchmaking works. So let's uh, start testing this. And now I'm doing this piece by piece uh, or writing the uh, pieces. The first thing that for this game, uh, that this matchmake, uh, the client has to do is to call method called uh, or, or API that it's called API, API match. And then you send a post and you have to send your player name in the request. Uh, uh, which actually has to be unique and, and so on. Um, and how we approach this is that Trump is supposed this feature that that every function here gets a context and it's just a closure map. And the context has a unique identifier for all the concurrent users, which is called user ID. So from that context in this payload generator, read the, read the user ID and based on that, we generate player name. So player name, user ID. And now in a callback function, uh, of course, we check the status again, that was this successful. But for in here, actually, the same context is passed here. And the idea is that we, we get the same context and the same context can be modified. Of course, in, in closure, it's not mutated, but the idea is that as a function return, when you return from the function, you can uh, send a new context that will be used for the next request. So you can uh, add more stuff uh, to the context and that will work as a state for, for a sim simulated user. 
So in here, uh, what we are reading from the response is uh, match ID, uh, match status, and, and player ID. It generates a player ID that we have to use later for, for connecting the server. And instead of just returning the uh, value, we uh, return a vector with, with the, was it successful, and then the updated context. Now we can call this, we simulate this call by adding, saying that the context is now user ID 45. I actually said to put it as a one, it's easier to follow. And now we can test to call this, and this method was successful. We and my the server is actually running here, so we can actually see that it's now finding match for player one. So it's actually uh, doing some stuff. Okay. Um, next thing, the thing that client have to do when when it has registered to the server, I want to join the game. Uh, it it will get uh, this match ID that it can use to pull uh, the match status. So in here, we now get the match ID from the context. We, we will got, get this uh, match ID because when we create the simulation, this start matchmake will the, be the first step and it should update the match status. And then, then we call the endpoint API match with, with the match ID and, and based on the response, uh, we up again update the uh, context and we check what's the what was the match status. Idea is that we should pull this until it uh, turns that matched. It's it's first it's like waiting for a match and then it's eventually when when the every time there's a fourth player joining then it should. And again we can test this now in in REPL. Maybe I'll put this true. So now if we call this first start matchmake and then pull the status, we should get, uh, and it's st still the match status is waiting. Uh, but then if, no, and if we call it third time, it's still waiting and then when we add a fourth player, it should then uh, move to, yeah, match status is now matched. So now we should be ready to join the game. The thing is that the protocol is still a bit more complex uh, because uh, it is common that, that when we have uh, the, the four players, we have the teams there, then the server still wants to verify that, that the clients are still alive and want to really join the game. That's why uh, after that, all the clients should call this put method for one time. This is kind of a confirming that, okay, I've been polling here for a certain period of time and, and I still, and now the game is ready. I, I want to join the game. So they should call this endpoint where they say that they are ready to start, where they use the match ID and player ID. And, and then it's a put method. And in a callback handl handler, now we uh, uh, add a marked as ready true to the context, which kind of uh, for us, it's that we update the state that we know that we don't do this ever twice because that's part of the protocol. Okay, so now in REPL we have, uh, I don't know so how to test this, but uh, basically now we've been doing this piece by piece. We have like this kind of a small methods that we tested that these work. And now we can start thinking about how, to, how we combine this as a load testing simulation. So now we create a simulation. Uh, it's the same kind of this Google simulation, but 
and we have just one uh, scenario. Now we are just testing this uh, player joining this matchmake process. Uh, so in steps, we start the matchmake. The function is the, what we created before. And then to simulate that, that the client is polling, we call this get match status um, twice here. This is like just one way to simulate it. Uh, and in here you can, this is also something that often you, if you're really simulating the users, you want to not call every method like immediately, but users usually don't work like that. They just wait, or for example, in these clients don't poll immediately. So you can have this Trumpy, for example, support this sleep before. So that before the step uh, sleep, this, uh, uh, there's a function actually uh, in func because then you can use random or something like that. Uh, you can pass in a function that the function should return how long you should wait in milliseconds. So in here, it's just waits for 100 milliseconds before. And then the last thing is to uh, mark as ready when this is done. And now we can run this uh, simulation. Uh, we noticed that it actually there's, there was 130 okay and two failures. The reason for failure is that this is not really following the protocol because now we have hard coded steps. So we are just, we are not really pulling until it's in a match state. We start calling the Mark as ready, just you know, after we have pulled twice, and sometimes it's it might not be in the in the state yet. So this is not what we have, want to have in load test. This is not realistic simulation. Um, so instead, uh, there's another way that we can have a dynamic simulation. So instead of hard coding the steps we are going to make you can use a function generator. So, and the function generator gets context as everything in here. And the idea with the function generator is that instead of it should return a, a new steps. And in here, uh, we actually now specify that, okay, if ma if we are if we don't have a match ID, then it's the beginning of scenario. We can call the start matchmake. Uh, and then if we have a match ID but it's not still matched, then we can pull the match status. And now with this sleep that every 100 milliseconds it stop it's pulls the the server. And and only after that. Uh, and if we haven't already called the mark as ready, then we, we ha have this mark as ready step. And when everything here is done, we return nil, which in this step, step generator means that, that it's the end of the scenario. Uh, and by the way, there's like this allow early termination, which is true. This is one just one trumpy feature that that prevents endless loop because with this uh, uh, step generator, if you never return nil for for some reason, it keeps calling same. But I like it. It's, it's an endless loop, so there's like this kind of a safe mechanism. And now we can run this uh, simulation. Everything is successful, and now this is actually testing the simulating it properly and we can and and i think now in 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 we have in repl developed the simulation that that simulates the use of protocol and now we can start the actual testing i would say so for example we can start with uh, uh, calling it it with longer period of time and and with different parameters. There are like usually 
at least two different ways in, in load testing uh, uh, to test the system. One, one is this like that I've used in this previous test that you say the concurrency. So in this case, it tries to, to always have this same concurrency. So it's using four simultaneous requests. And when whenever one request or one scenario finishes, it starts the one so that it keeps the concurrency at that level. Another, I would say even more common is this rate. So it's you, that, that's how users usually, or if we want to simulate that users enter into the system with a certain uh, pace. This rate means that there's, there, there's always 200 more users entering the system per second. So it means that if, if, if the system is able to handle the load, the concurrency will stay in, in, in 200. But then if, it, if the response time start to get slower and slower, then this like there will be more and more users because it cannot handle this continuous uh, flow of users coming in. So uh, if we now run, uh, and then, then one one thing is it's also you of course what you want to do in load test is you want to uh, warm up the system and I think now we have warmed up the system a bit already with the previous test so that's that's enough and now we can use some realistic for example with the rate five hundred and, and twenty seconds and now we will use this Gat Gatling uh, reporter to get. Uh, better looking reports what actually happens. And now if we look at what's happening in, this is what's happening in the matchmaking server at the moment. So it's trying to find match for quite a lot of players. Just here. Yeah, and now it has created a report uh, which we can then Let's go back on, uh, I think this is the latest one. And now, now this is actually something we want to happen. So we see that, that part of the request start takes quite a long time and then some are, some are failing. And then based on this uh, uh, report, um, Results we can then start actually analyzing what was what was the problem, and in our system, that why didn't it could handle the load, and then you can start thinking and where where did it happen and and that kind of stuff. But I don't want to go in in that detail now. Yeah, I think I think that's that's pretty much the basics that I wanted to. To show so how how this is like uh, possible, I, I think, and then I think this is like uh, pretty much the way I want to write the test. So that like uh, there's there's some scenarios that I want to simulate, and then I test like function by function. I'll, I'll test them in REPL, and then I put them in together uh, into a simulation, and then then only after the simulation actually works and everything works, then I'll start adding more load. But yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs>